We are in Delhi for the Auto Expo and with me today is Toshihiro Suzuki, President and COO of Suzuki Motor Corporation. Suzuki-san, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, Maruti is really the envy of everyone uh, in India. Uh, you've got a fantastic market share. But unlike other global OEMs and manufacturers, your future is very dependent on India. Do you think it's a bit risky to be so dependent on a market which is fundamentally very low margins and uh, the low margin structure of the market can be a challenge in the future? Having a big market share in India is a strength of Suzuki and we want to further enhance our marketing capability and service capability in India to make our brand stronger. No doubt, increasing profitability is a challenge in India. But ever since we built the first plant here in 1983, Maruti Suzuki has been growing along with the Indian auto industry. We would like to strengthen further our fundamentals and build on the foundations of what we had laid earlier. In order to get more Indian customers, we want to enhance our capabilities in products, service and sales. We want to further increase our value and by doing so, we want to take it to a situation where we are able to get better profits. But yes, it is a challenge. And are you worried about the lack of stability in policy making in India? Uh, for example, this whole thing on diesel, there's been no stable fuel policy and suddenly there's been a ban on diesel in Delhi. And it comes at a time when you have invested a lot in diesel technology in India. Whenever regulations like this are being chalked out, it has to be done strategically. Policies have to be shaped in a step-by-step -step way. In the case of diesel, any abrupt decision will adversely impact the manufacturer and it becomes difficult to comply with norms. This also causes inconvenience to customers and there's a possibility it would adversely impact the nation as a whole. Coming back to uh, product development, uh, you've been in India now for 30 years. Uh, you are showing a Vitara Brezza uh, for the Auto Expo. We say it's been conceived for the Indian market. That's fine. But after 30 years, Suzuki still does not design and develop a car fully in India. Do you think you've been behind the curve as far as R&D goes? Because 30 years is a long time as a market leader especially. That yet we have not seen a car developed by Suzuki in India. And will we see one in the future? Since 1983, Maruti has been based upon the technology developed by Suzuki. In the future, we would be giving that technology to Maruti and Maruti would be using that technology to develop the models. Whatever technology we have developed in the past 60 years of making cars, we are sharing with Indian engineers. Our strategy is to nurture and develop Indian engineers and as a result, Maruti is already contributing to the development of new models much more than they used to. We plan to focus on these employees and they will be taking the lead in developing newer models for the Indian market in the future as well. Besides, Suzuki will be developing developing advanced technology jointly with India, which will be transferred to India in the future. So going forward, new technology will be developed by both companies from the start. That just leads me to the last few questions, is that, uh, you know, talking about new technologies. Right now, your size is about 3 million units. Now there's been a lot of talk of uh, a partnership and even reports of Suzuki and Toyota, which I think the company has uh, uh, denied. But uh, can you go it alone? Is it possible with your size and the fact that most of your products are at a very uh, at the low end of the market where profits are very thin? Mm. Uh, can you go it alone in the future? And don't you think you'll need a partner, uh, some alliance to get in uh, newer technologies because you need scale and it's uh, really very very costly as well. I know. I don't think you need only scale to survive in this business. In case a company is capable to deliver products and services which are exceeding expectations of the customer, the company would still be able to manage its survival. It's like when supermarkets came, the small vegetable seller on the street did not go out of business. But if you look at the auto industry, the requirement of new technology is expanding. And it is necessary for us to develop this technology. But to depend on alliance to develop new technology is not good for the company. We must attempt to develop this technology on our own. And it's only when we cannot do it that we would look at a joint development. And that would mean, in all probability, with the component manufacturer. So, so what you're saying basically is that uh, you don't rule out an alliance, but uh, maybe uh, you may not have one in the future. Or let me put it another way. Uh, is this a no to any future alliance with any other OEM or after Volkswagen, 
SMC wants to take a bit of a break before looking at any other alliance? Yes, just because we have broken from Volkswagen does not mean that we are immediately looking out for some other OEM partner. First, we have to do our own study as to what kind of other technological capabilities we have before taking any decision. And last question, Osamu Suzuki-san is a legendary, mm. uh, uh, you know, he's been the legendary man behind uh, Suzuki Motor Corporation. Mm. He's uh, led the company since 1978. What's it like working with him? Is he a, a tough boss and a father? He has huge experience and he has been at the top for such a long time. So from that angle, it is difficult to really take over from him and surpass his achievements. I feel blessed to have him as a father. But yes, working with him is tough and a challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.